and welcome to the Charlian Forum. My name is Chris, and today I have finally finished leveling up all of the melee jobs in Dawn Trail, and so I wanted to do a quick little comparison, um, just sort of talking about where I feel like the melee role as a whole is at, um, you know, where each individual job lands for me, uh, where I think they could be better, where I think they're doing really well, and what I'd like to see changed in the future. All right, so we are on Ninja. We're just going to go ahead and get started on Ninja. Um, first up, Ninja, I think, um, and I have some notes here off to the side um, that I'll probably do like a little screenshot of it and stick it in the corner here. Um, we'll go sort of pros and cons, right? Um, Ninja, I think that the changes to a lot of the skills for Ninja to make them more thematic, um, stuff like... Uh, Kunai's Bane and Dokumori. Um, I think that those are awesome changes. I think that the job feels more like a ninja now, um, whereas like a mug and trick attack sort of felt like rogue skills, you know? Um, this feels more ninja, having the poison spray and the kunais. Um, it just it feels a lot better. The, the thematic is much stronger. Um, Kunai's Bane being a uh, AOE trick is just awesome period uh it's just better <laughs> um sinking down and losing the AOE on this in dungeons for trash pulls for roulettes and stuff like that feels terrible um the fact that this is now AOE basically makes single target trick feel bad um except for where it doesn't matter you know in bosses and things like that um but man, this change is sweet. And uh, I hope that this change kind of happens. I, I hope that maybe in the future they bring the level requirement down for this uh, because having access to this in some of the dungeons would be incredible. Um, Hutan becoming a trait as opposed to a ninjutsu that you have to keep up. Um, I think that I prefer that. Um, I know that that's... You know, some people might have liked the maintenance of the Hutan gauge. Um, I think that just making it a trait and converting Hutan into an AOE version of Sweetan is a really cool change um, because it just gives the ninja another spell, um, which again makes it feel more ninja ish that you're casting more ninjutsus. It also gives uh, Tenchi Jin a really good utility in uh, AOE pulls and trash pulls. It makes me feel like I'm not wasting it on a trash pull just to drop um, whatever it's... I always forget the name of this spell. Um, Doton. I always sort of felt like dropping Doton in an AOE pool with Tenshi Jin was like kind of meh um, because it requires me to pre-set up my spot because I can't move during Tenshi Jin. It requires the tank to stay in one place because Doton can't move. Um, so there's just a lot of factors there that I think are not amazing and giving it the ability to use Hutan instead where you can just cast it on a target, you get the AOE damage and you get to use trick immediately after your new AOE trick is just like insane quality of life for Tenchi Jin um, in dungeon pulls and Hutan is a direct result of that. Um, the new animations for the upgrade to Baba Kakra and Hellfrog are really cool. Um, under the Higi buff, the Zeshomepo and Deathfrog medium. I think these are really fun skills. The sound effect of Zeshomepo like makes my brain happy. Um, this like woodblock click. Oh yeah, it's just the animation's awesome. The sound is great. Um, super, super fun skills. Um, Hellfrog is cool. Um, I'm a little bored that we only get to press it once every two minutes, but you know, say la vie, that's just, it is what it is. Um, I think that Ninja is still Ninja. Um, if you liked Ninja before you will still like Ninja. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's probably in my opinion, at least the hardest melee to pick up and definitely the melee that requires the most thought to optimize it because there's just like so many buttons to press it's insanely busy during the burst um the two minute window on ninja is like just an absolute finger breaker if you don't play the job a lot um you know i've talked to people who have played a lot of ninja 
Um, and they say that once you get used to it, it's pretty comfy. Um, but Tenchi Jin is still, that's still a, a, an ankle breaker, um, being forced to stand still, um, to get the benefit of that is still pretty brutal. If you don't know when to use it, you will definitely kill yourself with it. Um, so, or you'll lose all the abilities from it. So ninja is definitely a job that requires a lot of thought, um, and definitely requires a little bit more optimization than some of the other melees. And so with that, let's kind of go into my cons on ninja. Um, first up, I, I feel like the Kaze Matoi, the, the new shuriken gauge, um, where you get two shuriken every time you press armor crush, uh, you get two Kaze Matoi, and these can be used to buff the damage of your Aeolian Edge, which consumes one kunai to increase the damage that it deals. Um, this obviously replaces the Hutan gauge uh, since the job no longer has Hutan. Um, this is okay, but I feel like it's super tacked on. Um, it doesn't really interact with the job in any way except for just ensuring that you have a reason to press armor crush now that Hutan is gone. Um, I think that they could have just as easily made a different system and just take an armor crush out of the game. Um, I'm not really sure if they're going to expand on this in the future, um, but it's a little bit boring. It's not really exciting to, I have dagger, so I press green button. I don't have dagger, so I press red button. Um, not that interesting. Um, it's also bizarre to me that the Kazi Matoi gauge does not interact at all with your AOE combo. Um, it has zero interaction with these two buttons. Um, to me, it would make sense that a Death Blossom would give Kazi Matoi and then Hake Mujin Satsu would consume them to deal increased damage. Um, it's bizarre to me that that doesn't happen because it just means that this bonus potency sits and does nothing um, in, in AoE pulls. It also feels kind of bad to like end a fight with a dagger left over because that's just like how the fight timing worked out because you can see the potency literally just sitting on your bar. Um, I mean, they don't go away, so, like, you get to keep it and use it in the next fight, which is nice, because it means you have to do less armor crushes in the next fight, but it's just a little bit tacked on feeling, um, it doesn't feel really super impactful to the rotation of the job, other than it's, like I said, instead of hitting this to keep Hutan up, you just hit it to increase the damage of Aeolian Edge, um, just not that interesting, um, speaking of tacked on, uh, Tenri Jindo, the finisher to Tenchi Jin. It looks really cool, and it does a bunch of damage, um, but it's not that interesting. Um, again, I think that this is sort of a symptom of something I'm going to talk about a little bit later, um, where I think they just kind of didn't know what to do with Ninja at 100, and so they gave Tenchi Jin a finisher because they're like, well, we got to put something somewhere, right? Um, so, eh, you know, it, it's okay. It's fine. The animation's cool. But I don't love it. I think it's a little bit boring. Um, I think also one of Ninja's biggest issues right now is that um, compared to other melees, especially the newest one, Viper, um, Ninja is just like infinitely more complex and infinitely more busy and just requires way more optimization and thought um, than other melees, uh, and I think that that sort of leaves it in a spot where unless it's doing crazy damage for the people who really optimize it, it's kind of not worth playing, in my opinion. Um, I mean, Trick is really good. Uh, Dokumori is incredible. Like, the utility of that increasing everybody else's damage is nuts. But at the end of the day, I think that Ninja does not do enough personal DPS to really make it a job that I want to explore a lot in the future. Um, I think it needs a buff for sure. Um, I think that uh, Hyosho, Ranryu, the big ice shurikens... Um, this is a crazy potency, but it kind of suffers from the same problem that like double down does where it's not an auto crit or an auto direct hit or whatever they're going to do. Um, and like not hitting a crit direct hit on this feels horrible. <laughs> um, so I just would love to see an auto crit on this at some point, um, or an auto crit direct hit Raiju, a fleeting Raiju and Fort Raiju, um, being two separate buttons, I think is kind of unnecessary, um, there's very few situations 
where I hit this um, and the like gap closer would be a problem because I'm either already in melee range or I'm using it to get into melee range. I don't know why this needs to be two separate buttons. I think that uh, fleeting should probably be removed and Raju should just be Raju um, because you either need the gap close to get into melee or you're already in melee. So like what difference does it make? So yeah, I think that these could probably be consolidated into one button. I don't know. Um, and you know, something, like I said, I'm going to talk about this later. Now's later. Um, I really struggle to see what they're going to do with Ninja going forward. Um, you know, the only like super obvious things that I could see is like a fourth Mudra and like three stacks of ninjutsu instead of two. Um, but their actual like core kit, I really struggle to see where they're going to go with it past uh, you know, like once we get to 8.0 and beyond, um, because the job is already pretty packed. It has a lot going on. Um, and I just don't know what they're going to do with it at this point to keep it feeling fresh and new. Um, so yeah, Ninja, I think is, it's in a fun spot. If you like a job that requires a lot of, um, optimization, you like a job that has really high abilities per minute. Um, you know, you like a job that's a little bit more challenging. Personally, I think that um, Ninja would be cool for you. Um, if you are just trying to, like, hit buttons and do damage, um, Ninja's probably not the job. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, let's go to Samurai next. All right, so Samurai. Um, I think that Samurai is in a really good spot right now. Uh, I think that it's an interesting spot because it's one of the only melees right now that has two very distinct different builds. Um, and that is Fast Samurai, which is playing at like a 2.08 GCD um, after their buff. And you have a slower Samurai uh, that's playing at like a 2.14. Um, personally, I'm playing Fast Samurai. Uh, slow Samurai is extremely cursed. Uh, because of the changes that they made with Subame happening after every EI Jutsu now, uh, that means that every minute you're behind two GCDs, um, and resetting for that is unbelievably cursed in my opinion. It leads to this really weird flowchart of burst windows where you have to like shift things around every other minute, and it it's cursed as hell. Um, whereas the fast samurai basically just plays like Endwalker Samurai, um, which I think was really good design. Um, so, uh, positives, uh, I feel like samurai is very complete. Um, it feels very complete. There's not a whole lot that I want added to the kit. Um, there's not a whole lot that I feel is missing. Um, their defensive Tengensu, this ability is absolutely insane. Um, it's so good. <laughs> um, it's probably one of the best personal defensives in the game. Um, if not the best, I think the only one that even gives it a run for its money is Arcane Crest on Reaper. Um, it's just crazy to have a 10% mitigation for four seconds. Um, you get gauge from it if you get hit and you get the region. Uh, and you also, you know, you keep that 10% for nine seconds after that. Um, it's just, it's cracked. Um, this skill is crazy. Um, damage output on Samurai feels good. I think it's in the right spot. Um, you know, with the changes they made to Subame, where you get to use it after every single EI Jutsu now, um, you know, they had to drop the potency of the basic kit. And I know a lot of people were worried about that, but it was an overall gain. I think, um, damage feels good. No complaints there. Um, the rotation of Samurai is still really fun, especially for 2.08 for me. Um, you know, it's, it's mostly unchanged. Uh, you know, you have some extra OGCDs you stick in here and there. Um, but overall, I think the job feels really good. And there's not a whole lot that I would really want changed in the rotation. Um... And, you know, the changes to Subame are fun. Uh, hitting, getting to hit Subame after every EI Jutsu 
kind of replaces the feeling of Kaiten um, for me because like that's the most fun moment on Samurai is hitting AI Jutsu, right? And having that huge effect go off with the big number um, and just getting to hit it twice every time is really cool. Uh, so they've kind of given this like really fun moment of glory to Samurai and they were just like, well, now you can just do it all the time, um, which is awesome. That's a really good change in my opinion. Um, so... Like I said in the beginning, you know, it could be positive, it could be negative, depending on who you are, but there are two very distinct builds for Samurai. Um, it's a little bit interesting because, you know, the one is going to be doing more damage, but it's a lot more cursed to optimized, whereas the other one is doing slightly less damage, but it's a little bit more brain dead. Um, or at least it's it's basically the same as the old Samurai rotation was, and that's pretty easy to keep up with, in my opinion. Um, so... Your mileage may vary there, but that could be a negative, could be a positive. Um, I think that Zanshin, uh, the new OGCD that's connected to Iki Shoten, um, this ability just needs a pass. Um, it needs an upgraded visual. It needs an upgraded sound effect. It needs something. Um, it feels super, super, super lame to press it. Um, it just sort of disappears into your animations, um, which it's an OGCD, so you could make the argument that that's kind of the point. Um, but for a button that you only get to press every two minutes with Iki Shoten, um, it just feels kind of lame. Um, and this is a theme that I will hit on in a couple of jobs where these new OGCD buttons just are kind of underwhelming. Um, you know, they perform fine, the damage is fine, but the visual moment of hitting them is just not that interesting. Um, and that's something I talked about in my previous uh, Samurai First Impressions video where that moment of hitting Zanshin just like doesn't do anything for me. Um, it's a pretty lame moment without a lot of impact. Um, there's a couple parts of the kit that I'm not crazy about still, like Meditate uh, is still like meh. Um, but I mean, it functions, so it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I'd love to see something. It's a little bit more interesting. Um, but at the same time, meditate is kind of, kind of a legacy skill. Um, you know, it's been around since Samurai was introduced and it's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It does its job. You know, you get your gauge, you get your Kenki, um, you get your, um, stacks of, uh, meditate. So it, it's not a huge deal. Um, I would just like for something more interesting to be there, but I don't really know what, so that's not really a, a valid criticism. That's just sort of me being me. Um, last thing, I kind of wish that there was more interaction between the Sin and the Kenki gauge. Uh, you know, that's, I'm, I'm going to probably offend some people here. I am a, uh, chitin removal ap apologist. I'm fine with chitin not being here. Um, it was just a button that you pressed before you pressed another button. It was just a modifier. Um, it doesn't really serve a purpose functionally, but it did serve a purpose, uh, in the loop of the brain of the player, right? So like hitting Kaiten and then hitting your EI Jutsu had this sort of feeling, this moment that, uh, Samurai lost. Um, but I think that the biggest thing that it lost when Kaiten was removed is it lost the interaction between your Kinki and your Sin. It was the only skill in the game that interacted directly with those two uh, resources, right? It bridged the gap between them because you had to spend Kinki to boost the consumption of your Sin is essentially the loop. Um, and without that, it's there's like literally no interaction. They're two completely separate resources that don't interact with each other. Um which is kind of boring because like the meditation stacks already do that. So we have three completely compartmentalized uh, sources of power on Samurai that don't interact at all. Um, and that just kind of feels lame. Like it feels like maybe one of them doesn't need to be there. Um, maybe they could find a way to kind of force those things together and create a more cohesive system on the job. Um, so I'd like to see that. I don't really know exactly what that looks like, you know, but it's not my job to design the game. I just play it um, and talk about it. So 
it's it's a little interesting. Um, but I think that overall, Samurai is in a really good spot. Um, it's it's probably the most interesting melee, I think, because of the fact that it has those two separate build options um, and how different they are, how different they play. Um, so if you like big numbers and you like Samurai, if you liked it previously, you'll like it now. Um, it's still doing great damage and it's still a lot of fun. So next, let's go to Dragoon. All right, so Dragoon. Um, this job received a rework with the launch of Dawn Trail. Um, in my opinion, first big uh, pro, I think that the rework is an improvement overall. Um, that's just my opinion. Some people might disagree, <laughs> but I think it makes the job a lot more playable. Um, so the biggest change from the rework is that Gear Scoggle will now instantly put you into Life of the Dragon, and you can cast it right off the rip. There's no need to build up eyes, and uh, so that delayed entry into your burst phase is now gone on Dragoon. Um, this is an overall W, in my opinion, because it means the Dragoon lines up with burst windows much more uh, easily. Uh, you actually get to utilize your own buffs inside of burst windows as opposed to just throwing them for your party members and then sitting there for 30 seconds like an idiot while you build up an eye. Um, so I think that this overall has been a good kit change for Dragoon. Um, the new animations for Spiral Blow and Lance Barrage I think are really, really fun. They're super cool looking, um, very thematic, very flashy. Uh, the new fifth button, Drake's Bane, um, I like this button as well. I think it's fun to press and uh, it reduces the amount of like looping, boring stuff that happens in the kit, I think, to have that extra button instead of just bouncing between Fang and Claw and Wheeling Thrust. Um, so I think that's great. I think the Nastron changes where these are now three second recast or two second recast rather, and you can rock out three of them really quick is an awesome change. Um, I think that having all of the new OG CDs in the kit um, it makes it a lot more interesting. I, I missed Starcross there because I was yapping, but having uh, the follow-up to Dragonfire Dive as an OGCD is really fun. I think having the follow-up to Star Diver, Star Cross is, is a fun kit change-up. And they've gotten a lot of stuff to sort of just fill in the gaps. Um, and I think the job benefits from that massively. Um, so, on to cons. Uh, there are quite a few of them with Dragoon, unfortunately for me. Um, jump and Mirage Dive feel kind of pointless um you know jump less so jump is just like a cool thematic ogcd that dragoon has and i'm fine with that um but mirage dives feels completely meaningless now um i don't really know why it's still there because it doesn't interact with the kit in any way it's just damage um it's just kind of boring it's it's a lazy piece of kit that could have been exchanged for something else that's like a little bit more thematic and a little bit more tied into the job um and a little bit more you know interactive with the rest of the kit because right now you just hit jump and then you just hit mirage dive and you just get damage and that's kind of boring um in the same vein i think that wormwind thrust feels extremely vestigial now um because your scales your first mind's focus scales just come from uh, your, I forget what the skill is called, whatever the upgraded uh, uh, Raiden Thrust that you get when you finish a combo um, over your True Thrust. You know, it, it's just not really that interesting. The, the interaction there is very deterministic. Um, and, you know, it, they took it off of... You know, since you don't have eyes building off of Mirage Dive anymore, they kept the scales there. Um, again, I just think it feels very tacked on, very vestigial. Um, and as a result of that, this gauge is basically meaningless unless you're in life and all it does is put a timer on it for life. So it's literally just like a stopwatch. 
Um, it's just kind of boring. I really want them to add a new piece to Dragoon that actually makes something happen with this gauge. Um, you know, maybe make Mirage Dive instead of giving eyes that put you into life. Maybe it gives you some other resource that buffs something. Um, you know, there's just a lot of options that you could kind of tie all these pieces back together into one kit and make it feel a little bit more cohesive. Um, I think that the new gap closer winged glide, um, it's fine. I wish though that, uh, Dragoon had something kind of like Samurai or Reaper, where when you jump out, your Piercing Talon would be upgraded to something, um, you know, a new ability and or an enhanced version of it or something. And when you throw your Piercing Talon, maybe you apply a debuff to the target. And when you have that debuff up, Winged Glide transforms into Spine Shatter Dive. So you get a gap closer that deals damage, but only under the condition of that you used your back out and come back in kit appropriately, right? Um, because I think that you should be rewarded for that. It's mechanically what's intended um, is for you to do that process for mechanics. And so I think, you know, to jump out, not miss a GCD and jump back in, um, I think that you should be rewarded for doing that properly. Um, and an easy way to do that would be to just make this deal damage only if they have the debuff from... Uh, whatever this skill becomes, right? Um, I think it would just be a really interesting way to benefit the player and also just increase the interesting moment of disengaging from a boss. And, you know, otherwise, Wing Glide just stays the same and it, it doesn't do anything, right? Which is fine. Um, AoE being level 40 is still stupid. It's completely unacceptable that this has not changed in 10 years. Um, there is literally no reason that Dragoon should have to wait until level 40 to get their first AoE skill. And if I was handed a magic wand and I could wave it and change one thing about this job, it would be that you get Doom Spike at level 15, um, you get Sonic Thrust at like 40, and then Korth and Termit at like 60, right? Um, I think that the idea that you can go into a dungeon on Dragoon as a new player and just not have an AoE until level 40 um, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's just stupid. It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for it, literally no reason. Um, it, it's just silly. Um, you know, almost every job in the game has some kind of AoE capability by the time they get to level 15, and Dragoon just doesn't. Um, piercing Talon is not anywhere near as important as having a AOE, um, even life surge, you know, it's, it, it, it's fine, but like, why not make life surge level 15 and make piercing Talon level 30 or something and make, uh, doom spike level 15, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's just crazy. It doesn't, it's, it's beyond asinine. Um, but you know, other than that, I, I just really would like to see something happen on this job gauge, some system that connects all of these pieces together. I feel like after the rework, rework, excuse me, uh, Dragoon is, it's in a fun place. It's very fun to play, but it sort of feels like, you know, uh, jump and mirage dive or over here, the core rotation is over here. Worm wind thrust is over here. And, you know, your burst window with all your OGCDs is kind of off to the side. It sort of just feels like there's not a lot of connective tissue in the job. There's a lot of different parts floating around, but nothing to kind of tie them all together. Um, and so that's sort of the changes that I would like to see going forward with Dragoon into 8.0 and beyond is to just make the job feel it's in a good base level, but I would like to see it come together a little bit better. So that's my piece for Dragoon. Uh, let's just jump on to Reaper right here. I'm not going to change dungeons. Um, let's just jump in. I have to leave combat though, huh? So Reaper, I think Reaper is in a really good place. Um, I really like the way that Reaper plays right now. Um, 
you know, going down my list here, it's generally unchanged. So if you liked Reaper in Endwalker, you will continue to like it in Dawn Trail. It's very solid. The kit feels very complete. Um, the rotation feels great to execute. There's not a whole lot that I would like to see changed about Reaper. Um, I think that the new uh, buff that you get from uh, Gluttony with Executioner, changing Gallows, Gibbet, and Guillotine into new skills, um, this is really fun. The animation is really cool. I love the green. It feels very thematic. Um, it just is like a cool new way to hit the same buttons, um, which is, it's good. Um, I really like that design. And, you know, some people might say it's boring, um, but I'd say it sure as hell beats having to hit a bunch of other buttons. Um, they found a way to add some flavor to that little bit, of, that one minute burst window without dramatically changing the way that the job plays. And I think that overall that's a W. Um, Sacrificium, I think, is a really fun OGCD because it adds just a little bit of diversity to your uh, reawaken window, or sorry, <laughs> your enshroud window, um, where you get to press that, you know, kind of wherever you want in there. Um, there's obviously optimal places to press it, but you get the chance to sort of place that where you can. And I think that that's a fun optimization tool. Um, Arcane Crest is still crazy. Arcane Kest is, is still really, really good. Um, like I said before, I think that this and Tengensu are probably the best defensives in the games that don't come from tank. Um, they're just nuts. They're really, really powerful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Reaper is just great. There's a couple cons. Um, I don't love Perfectio. I don't like having things tied to the two-minute, kind of like Tenry Jindo um, or my complaints about you know, uh, Zanshin, uh, it just doesn't feel that interesting. Um, it just means I get to hit a button every two minutes, um, which I already hit a button every two minutes. So like, why are you giving me, well, here's a two minute button that you can press because you pressed your two minute button. You know, it's just a little bit tacked on a little bit lazy. Um, I'd rather see it come from something like after you cast, um, communio you get a, a resource and like maybe every third communio you get to hit uh, uh you get to hit uh, perfectio instead or something like that um i just think that that's a more interesting way to do it because then it's sort of tied into the rotation and not just pressing a button and getting a, a, a shiny bobble for it um death design still sucks um i hate this skill it's stupid <laughs> uh you know uh it's, it's insane because when they made Viper, they basically corrected this error and then they took it away from Viper and it's still here on Reaper. It's still the same. Um, and it's like, man, if you're going to take it off of Viper, just put it on Reaper where hitting Soul Slice or hitting Infernal Slice or something applies this debuff and you don't have to hit this stupid separate GCD every uh, 30 seconds or every minute to keep this debuff up because it just feels lame. It feels tacked on. It feels like I'm just like got a checkbox, like, oh, I'm a good boy and I hit my skill. Um, it, it just, it, it's stupid. I don't like it. I didn't like it with uh, Viper. I, I just think that it's a little bit boring. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I think that Overall, similar to Ninja, I think that Reaper is going to struggle in future expansions, or designers of Reaper will at least struggle in future expansions with what to do with this job going forward um, because the kit feels so complete right now. I just don't know how they're going to add on to it. Um, I think that it's probably going to require a pretty large shakeup in the design in order to make it feel different enough um, because you can't just keep adding finishers and adding, oh, well, now when you hit Soul Slice, you get 
you know, executioner's slice, waxing slice, and infernal slice. Like, you can't keep doing that forever, right? <laughs> You're going to run into a point where the job has to change at some level. Um, and I fear that with Reaper, that point is like right now. Um, because I legitimately don't know what they could do other than remove death, remove uh, shadow of death and whirl of death, integrate death design into the rotation somewhere. Um, if they insist on keeping it and then, you know, maybe they get like a third stack of soul slice and soul scythe. Um, maybe they in shroud has a shorter recast time so you can enter it more often. I mean, like your double in shroud windows can be faster. Um, you know, I have no idea. There's a, there's not a lot of room here, um, which is what I fear most. Um, same for Ninja. So that's where I'm at with Reaper and Dragoon previously. So let's move on now to Monk. All right. So Monk, um, this job also got its semi-annual rework, uh, this expansion. It was not marketed that way, but it did. Um and again, similar to the Dragoon rework, I think that this rework is an overall positive for the job. Um, again, that might be a hot take, but I think that the new uh, Fury gauge, I believe is what it's called officially, or the balls as it's called unofficially, um, it's, it's a fun system. It makes me play Monk way more than I have previously. Um, Monk was a job that I leveled to level every job and then basically never touched in previous expansions. And uh, this expansion, I actually have played it a little bit. Um, it's fun. I enjoy it. I think it's a good system. Um, and yeah, I think that overall, it's it's a relatively good change. I think that it makes the job a lot more approachable. It makes it easier to understand. Um, but it does reduce its flexibility slightly um, because you don't have, you aren't battling the timers. You're now battling the balls. Um this is a lot more rigid, right? Uh, whereas timers, you could refresh them and kind of move through them how you see fit. Um, this deterministic system is a lot more rigid. Um, so long time monk players may or may not like it, but I think if you've never played a monk, now's a great time to try it. Um, uh, let's see. The new riddles and replies, um, these are all awesome. <laughs> these are great skills um i think they're very thematic um i love how they look i love how they sound um they're very fun skills to press monk continues to be i think one of the most fun jobs to just like press buttons on right um something about playing monk feels really good it's super fast um which feels awesome. It's just a fun job to hit buttons on and just play, um, which not all jobs are. So I think that Monk really succeeds in that regard. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of up to the beholder whether it's better or worse than previous Monk, but I think it's still just as fun. Um, the new upgrades for the uh, combo... Leaping Oboe, Rising Raptor, and Pouncing Coral. I think these are all cool skills. Um, they look very thematic. They look fun. Um, yeah, I think that Monk's in a pretty good spot. Um, but it does have some issues. I think the biggest issue that it has, again, just like Dragoon and Reaper, is I don't know what they're going to do to this job going forward. You know, it's in a really good spot right now. And I honestly sort of feel like if they shake it up again, they might do some damage to it. Um, I feel like they've landed in a spot where Monk is like, it, it finally feels good to play. Um, and, you know, you don't have to worry about timers. You don't have to do blah, 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 100 different optimizations. You don't have to do this two, three, six thing or whatever the hell it was, two, three, four. Um, you know, now it's a much more approachable job. It's a much simpler job to play, which I know simple is like the heresy word of Final Fantasy XIV, um, at least for the old heads. But as somebody who's played since the Realm Reborn, I have never played Monk more than I have now um, because unless you played it all the time, it just didn't 
I didn't feel like devoting the time to figuring it out. Right. I had other stuff to do, other jobs to play. Um, this I can figure out immediately, right? I can understand it at a glance. And I think that a job being approachable is never a bad thing. Um, so I think that that is great, but some people might disagree. So that's sort of your mileage may vary. And I don't know where they're going to go with it from here because I fear that any changes will, will kind of blow it up at this point. Um, the order that you get your AOE skills in is stupid. It's still stupid. It's been stupid for the longest time. Um, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why you get arm of the destroyer at 26. This is another, again, why are we not getting AOE until level 26? Um, but that's neither here nor there. Right. Um, but like, why do we get arm at 26 and then we get our third form rock breaker at 30 and then we get our second form four point fury at 45. So you have to until level 45 do AOE single target AOE to move through your forms. Um, it's stupid. <laughs> I don't know why it's designed that way. It, it would be an easy thing to do to just swap those two buttons and problem solved, you know? Um, it's just kind of silly. Um, I will say that Monk, I think, is the job that has the most, like, redundant buttons. Um, I don't know why Forbidden and Enlightened uh, Meditation need to be separate buttons, and I don't know why Forbidden Chakra and uh, Enlightenment need to be separate buttons. This should just get the Shoha treatment. You have you know, forbidden meditation and forbidden chakra. And it doesn't align AOE with fall off. Um, it, why, you know, like <laughs> why do we need two separate buttons that do the same thing? Um, that both just have an OGCD that deals damage. Um, it's, it's a show ha situation all over again. They solved it for one job. Just solve it for all of them, please. Um, but yeah, I, I think that other than that, Monk is in a pretty good spot. Uh, it's still an absolute supportive powerhouse. Uh, Brotherhood is nuts. Um, Earth's Reply is nuts. It's just like a straight up giant heal, um, which is crazy. And it's AOE. So like that's really strong um, for a, a DPS to just be able to heal everybody in the group for 17k is pretty crazy. Um, you know, that could be the difference between a death in a mechanic and survival if your monk does it right. Um, mantra is still really strong. Um, yeah, you know, monk is just pretty, it's in a pretty good spot. I don't know what they're going to do with it going forward, but I really hope that they find a way to keep this system that it's got right now going because I think it's the best that monk has ever been personally. Um, so that just leaves one job, the newest one, Viper. Um, again, I'm not going to change dungeons for this. It's fine. Um, Viper, I think has been a great addition to the melee roster in 14. Um, the job has like insane style points. Uh, it feels super flashy and super fun to play. Um, it's very fun. It's engaging to play. I think that, you know, referencing back to my death's design comments, uh, Noxious Nash, which the job had on release, uh, was basically just Death's Design, but it was applied by a button in your kit as opposed to like a separate GCD um, that was removed uh, in order to make the job slightly less busy um, and to make setups for burst windows a little bit easier to understand. Um, it's a controversial change. I think it's a good change personally. I know that a lot of people were very upset about that. Um, I don't know. You know, uh, to me, maintenance is not really maintenance if you just have to hit a button to maintain something. Uh, you know, it's the same way with like, I feel the same about like healer dots right now or like bard dots. Um, unless it interacts with something in your kit directly, I feel like it's sort of just there to be there. Um, you know, Bard, I think was the last job that had like a good debuff system where its songs were procced by the debuffs, which meant that to be optimal, you needed to maintain them, right? You had a button to do it and it directly impacted your kit. Um, and not just like do more damage. Like that's not, that doesn't impact your kit. You know what I mean? That's, that's just 
a button that you're required to press, um, which just makes it another button, which I think is lazy. But with Bard, you know, you had that uh, interaction where if you don't have this thing up, you still get the benefits of a song, but you don't get all of the benefits, right? Um, so Noxious Nash, I think, was like the lazy version, and I'm fine with that being removed. It's just not that interesting. Sorry. Um, but I think the biggest strength that Viper has is that it's really easy to play. It's super easy to pick up. It's super easy to understand. It's super easy to have somebody new to Melee kind of step into the role on Viper, um, because it has a lot of buttons, but they're all very easy to understand. The loop is very easy to understand. Um, something that I think that not a lot of people talk about that deserves to be talked about is the fact that Viper has like the most insane synergy I've ever seen between their AOE kit and their regular kit. Um, being able to switch like pretty seamlessly between these two like methods is pretty sweet because you can just hit either one of these. They share a cooldown. They have the same exact loop. Um, you know, the, the method of deploying these skills does not change whether they're single target or AOE. And I think that that's a really strong design because it allows the player to sort of keep that parity in their head where I know that I'm going to follow this loop whether I'm in single target or AOE, um, the amount of buttons I press doesn't change. The amount of, um, you know, attention I have to pay doesn't change. It's just, am I hitting the single target version or the AOE version right now? Um, and I think that's a really strong design. So I, I commend Viper for having that design. Um, I think that... Viper probably has the best downtime tool in the entire game with Uncoiled Fury. Um, this skill is so powerful <laughs> that I don't even worry about downtime anymore when I'm playing Viper. Um, it actually like feels good to be able to just hang back and be like, y'all can go in and do your thing around the boss. I'm just going to sit here and throw these, these nine GCDs, you know? Or these nine skills. Um, it's super sweet. It's a really, really fun thing to have on a melee job that you can just hang back and just throw these abilities and you don't lose any damage. It's not a detriment. Um, it's a really fun design. Um, so if I have to pick some negatives out, uh, it can get a tiny bit boring. Um the rotation is so simple, you know, it's just like two, one, two, one, two, one, you know, you sort of flip back and forth, um, of these buttons that it can get slightly brain dead. Um, if you play other melees that are a lot more challenging and you're sort of engaged by those and then you switch to Viper, it can be a little difficult to stay engaged on it. Um, you can come, you can become complacent very quickly playing this job. Um, the fact that it doesn't have a personal defensive is super cringe. Um, same thing is true of Dragoon. I just just give him defensives, man. It's it's so stupid. The fact that Viper has a defensive in PvP that is like very thematic and fits the job very well, and then it just doesn't have one for PvE is insane. Um, and like every new job, there's a total inundation of Vipers, which means that joining a PF with a Viper or on Viper, especially when the PF is set to one player per job is uh, like borderline impossible right now, <laughs> um, unless you just catch the PF really early. Um, but that's a pretty like mild issue to have. If you're just queuing into content, that doesn't really matter. Right. Um, but it's just something to consider. The job is very popular and it's easy to play. So it's got a ton of people playing it, um, which just means that you're, you know, you're, you're battling an uphill battle when it comes to certain things. Um, getting into PFs, uh, if you're parsing, parsing on Viper is pretty cursed because it's like, it's just got like triple the parses that every other melee DPS does. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's understandable though, because the job's easy to play. 
It's got unbelievable uptime with Uncoiled Fury, and it does a lot of damage. Um, and it's also just, like, fun, you know? Like, hitting Double Reawaken feels super cool in a raid because um, you're just, like, flying. Um, it feels super fun to press these buttons, and the fact that you get to do it, like, all the time, you know, because the job moves so quickly, and it's a gauge-positive job, so you are doing your rotation, you will end up getting a free reawaken every now and then um, that you can slide in in between your buffs. Um, and it's just, like, it's really fun. It, it's got insane style. Um, they cooked with the design here, and... It's a super fun job to play, so a lot of people are playing it. Um, so if you're sort of an off-meta Andy, and you kind of like doing the the thing that nobody else is doing, you should probably play Ninja instead. <laughs> um, you'll work three times as hard to do less damage, um, but you'll be different. So, yeah. I think that Viper's awesome. Um, uh, I do think it kind of suffers from the same problem that the other melees do though where like this kit feels pretty good right now and next expansion i'm kind of like well what are they gonna do you know they're probably just gonna upgrade some stuff maybe add in like another ogcd somewhere in the kit which holy shit it's got enough ogcds right now but you know there's always room for more i guess um i don't know you know i, I think that's a common issue with all jobs right now and that's something that, you know, I'll talk about in another video, probably just like, where do we go from here? Because a lot of them are sort of at a point where we're at a, an apex, a, a nexus of sorts, where it's like, if we do anything else to this job, we might completely destroy it. Um, or we're going to have to transform it dramatically to, uh, to do anything different. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, but that's all I got for today. Um, little bit of a yap sesh, but just wanted to get my thoughts out there on the melee role. I think that overall melee is in a pretty good spot. That's very balanced other than Ninja. Ninja needs to do more damage. Um, but other than that, I think that all the melees feel pretty good and all the damage feels pretty good. So they're all fun. It's just what flavor you want to have. So that's all for today. And, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.